On this episode of Blue Zoo TV presented by Hikari, we'll continue our tour of the Steinart Aquarium in San Francisco, California. One of the great behind the scenes stories here are sea dragons, and I'll let Charles explain. So we have uh, some of our backup animals here. We have weedy sea dragons, this one and these ones, and then we have a little bit more ornate ones, which are called the leafy sea dragons, more golden colored. And these are interesting animals in that, uh, like seahorses, the, uh, the males are the ones that carry the eggs. So the females produce the eggs, and the males carry them on the bottom of their tail until they hatch. And then they're free, they're free swimming on their own at that point. So these animals that we get are all come from a, a single supplier in Australia. And he has a permit from the Australian government that allows him to capture pregnant males. And then he holds them until the eggs hatch out. And then once they hatch, he returns the males to the wild. And then he raises the juveniles to a certain size. And then he sells them to the public aquarium trade. And we've got, uh, this is probably the female here. This is the male, it's a lot, his body isn't as deep. And you see how his tail is getting that orangish red coloration on it. And that might be an indication that he's getting ready to breed or he's getting the breeding condition. The, the trick has been uh, getting them both in the breeding condition at the same time. There's been a few aquariums in the U.S. that have bred the Wheaties, the Long Beach Aquarium, Tennessee Aquarium, and Georgia Aquarium. But uh, nobody's been successful yet with the leafy sea dragon. That's really the holy grail. Now are these in a separate tank, it must be a lot easier for them to feed because they're not the fastest animals, right? Right. Uh, it's, it's about the same. The exhibit's uh, fairly large as well. So you always want to have some backup animals in case something happens to the one on exhibit. And also it's quieter back here and this is hopefully where we can breed them. What is the lifespan of a typical sea dragon? Um, it's, it's not really known how long they live in the wild, but in captivity it's anywhere from three to five or six years. They get sexually mature after about two years. Now I know it's a little difficult um, to sometimes follow when you talk about the eggs laying on the bottom, but if they have a, a spawn, how many do they usually have at a time? It's not one or two, right? No, it's probably closer to like 50 to 100 eggs that they'll have on the tail. And the ones you have here, are they pretty much full grown? Uh, no, they can get much larger than that. We like to give them live mice as well. They really, get, really enjoy the live treat. It helps to keep them in good condition as well. Now, how often do you feed them? They get fed three times a day. Two to three times a day. They get uh, frozen mice, and then they also get, well, I just gave them now, the live mice. And we've also used uh, Hikari mice. We buy a lot of Hikari mice. So I like to mix it up, give them different food sources. You know, are they able to be shipped? I mean, how do you do it? They're, are they, they're not that durable, are they? Uh, they ship fairly well. Um, we've had sometimes issues with swim bladder problems with them. When they come in, they're very positively buoyant, or they're negatively buoyant. They can't keep themselves up. But usually they, they ship them with no oxygen or just a little bit of air in the bag because if you put too much oxygen in, it burns their gills. It can affect them. But uh, they've shipped pretty well. I used to get them when I was in Hawaii. We would buy them from Australia. They never had any DOAs or anything. They did really well. But they're really sensitive. Like some, they'll look fine one day, and you'll come in the next day, and they'll be floating upside down on the surface. Take them, put them in a tank in the back, and then they break themselves up, and they're fine again. Or they just go downhill really quickly. So we also don't allow the public to take uh, flash photos, because that can startle them, too. They also have a night light. So at night, there's always a little light shining above, because they get confused by the surface. They don't really know what a, a surface layer is, because they're not in that environment. Naturally, they're down by the bottom. So they, they start tubes, what they call tubing. They put their snout out of the water and they gulp in air. And they can get positively buoyant from that, too. More behind the scenes with Charles in a minute. Frustrated with your cloudy aquarium? Want a simple, easy to use solution for clear, clean, healthy, odor free water? You need EcoBioBlock. EcoBioBlock's unique beneficial bacteria live and multiply in volcanic rock for up to two years, reducing the need for maintenance and water changes. EcoBioBlock in every aquarium for clear water, healthy fish. Give us a call or go online to ecobioblock.com. 
Report on Zamquel Plus detoxifies your aquarium of fish killers like ammonia and nitrates. Amquel Plus detoxifies harmful chloramines, toxic pheromones, and chlorine, and has been a trusted solution for aquarists for more than 30 years. Cordon's superior water conditioning products help make fish keeping easy. Visit Cordon.com and check out the entire line of products and ask for Cordon products at your favorite store. Cordon, trusted solution since 1961. We're behind the scenes with Charles and looking at some of the marine setups and displays, but it's interesting here, you don't have each one stand alone, do you? No, we don't. We have, uh, actually these are six different size exhibits, and because of the tight quarters back here, there's not enough space to give each one its dedicated filtration system. So what we decided to do was we made this one common sump over here, and all the water goes from these six exhibits into this one sump. So I have all my protein skimmers, GFO reactors, carbon reactors, a uh, calcium reactor over here, uh, dripping in caulk washer, it's just uh, like you would do in a normal uh, home system, except this total volume is probably about um, 500 gallons that we have in total. And each system has its own lighting. We've got metal halide, we've got uh, LED lighting. We have a mixture of different types on tanks. So it's, it's uh, quite the operation back here and it's, it's kind of tight, so that's why we have them all joined together. We have over 180 exhibits at the Seinhardt Aquarium. How often do you change up exhibits? Because I know some aquariums have added jellyfish because jellyfish became popular and people were able to keep them, sustain them. How often do you look at maybe in a, in a meeting or committee and decide, you know what, we need to change things up a little bit? When we first opened, there was a lot of exhibits that we felt just didn't work the way that they were intended to work uh, by the original designers. So we, we changed those around. So we've been making modifications constantly. We're with Chris Cleavers from Hikari. Chris, these are cichlids, very popular, very colorful freshwater fish, sometimes mistaken for marine or saltwater fish because of their color. Well, with that said, color being so important, what has Hikari done or addressed to get these cichlids to be so colorful? Well, one of the things that we've spent a lot of time doing is going on explorations around the world to see them in their natural habitat. So we've gone to Lake Malawi so we can actually see what these fish look like uh, and what the colors should be. And we've got a number of different diets that we've developed that will help them develop the colors from our cichlid gold to our cichlid excel, which is specifically for these types of fish, to our number one food, the uh, cichlid bio gold plus, which is the first probiotic food on the market. Uh, and we've had that for uh, about seven years out there, but it's uh, a product that actually proliferates a bacteria in the fish's digestive system that allows them to use more of the nutrition and the color enhancing ingredients so they can actually develop colors like these guys and look more like they should in the wild. To learn more about Hikari Foods, go to HikariUSA.com. Don't miss our next episode as we finish up our tour of the Steinhardt Aquarium at the California Academy of Sciences. Blue Zoo TV presented by Hikari. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter at Blue Zoo Radio. We can hook up and meet at places like this, Alcatraz in San Francisco. That's Twitter at Blue Zoo Radio. To learn more about the show or to email us, go to bluezootv.com.